Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn serves on the Judiciary Com Committee, Armed Services and Veterans Affairs Committees as well. Great to have you in focus it's in good person. Good to be with you. So Thank wonderful. You. Uh, so let's just pick it up with the basic math here. We have a lot of people coming already. Yes. It's about to become more. GOP yes. has stood in the way a little bit, though. I mean, you, you are protecting America from this a little bit. Can, can you stave off what's going to happen? We certainly would like to. We're very concerned. Right now, 6,000 people per day is about what the Border Patrol is dealing with. When Title 42 goes away, they anticipate, this is Border Patrol's number, that it will be 18,000 a day. So look at that, from 6,000 to 18,000. The cartels are global organizations. Last year, they brought people from 160 different countries to our southern border. Among that, you had about 40 known terrorists that were apprehended. So, Harris, this is what the Border Patrol is dealing with. And this is why for 30 years, they have been saying, we need three things, we need a wall, we need better technology. We need more officers and agents on the ground. And they thought they were going to get that wall. They're not. Now, Title 42, remain in Mexico, things that helped them to, to stave off the influx of illegal entry, whether it's drugs, whether it's human trafficking, gangs, sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. Now, that is going away. Let's talk about the terrorism. Uh, the potential mm -hmm. for it because of who's coming across the border. Uh, former ICE acting director under President Trump, Tom Homan, to mm -hmm. told me this week that about 700,000 getaways That's are there. Right. Do we have any idea of how many of them could be on no, that terrorist list? No, we don't. List? And here is the thing. There are about 700, 750,000 known gotaways. Those are the ones they saw on surveillance and they couldn't get them. And these are the really bad guys with the drugs, the fentanyl that is killing so many people in this country. Now, here's the thing that Border Patrol will tell you, and I'm sure whether it's Mark Morgan or Tom Holman, mm -hmm. you see some of the gotaways, but what about those that you never see on surveillance? So is the number a million? Is it 1.5 million? Do you think it could be? See, they don't know. They don't know. And there's not a way to quantify that because there is not a wall. There is not surveillance. They are not able to secure parts of the border and then target their resources to areas where there cannot be a wall. This is why Border Patrol has said a physical barrier serves as an, an impediment to people trying to come You know who knows that? Vice That's President Kamala Harris, because she's from California, and they have a wall. Yes, they do. San Diego, <laughs> and look at how it yeah, has improved been there. the situation there. You're exactly right. I'll get to this. Here's Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signing a bill increasing punishments for fentanyl trafficking as the opioid crisis is getting worse. We can and must uh, lower the demand for drugs through education and outreach programs, but we also uh, must fight the supply of drugs and crack down on dealers and traffickers, particularly of substances like fentanyl. We're going to do all we can to decrease the prevalence of fentanyl in Florida, and that means uh, if you're dealing fentanyl, um, you are killing people and you are going to be put in jail. Could we do that at the federal level? Uh, it, it, we should be. I was talking with one of uh, my sheriffs in Northwest Tennessee, and he said, Marsha, 80% of the drugs we apprehend are either fentanyl or it's something laced with fentanyl. Mm -hmm. They're even taking gummy bears and rolling them in fentanyl, and this is how they're going after younger children that they can addict to this. 80% of the deaths in some of our counties are fentanyl-related overdose deaths, 80% of the overdose deaths. But Harris, these people ought to be locked up. They are causing people to lose their lives. They're actively selling these drugs. And the bad thing is, these are cartel mm -hmm. uh, groups that are pushing this. They have set up their hubs in U.S. cities. A lot of these uh, sanctuary cities, they're working on our soil and they all ought to be locked up. 
I want to get to the baby formula, but I have yeah. to ask about the Vice President Kamala Harris. MIA, missing in action. What's happening there? I, we don't know. Don't see her. She comes every once in a while to break a vote and uh, break a tie on a vote. But I wish that she would take the lead on the border because these cartels are abusing women and children. And that needs to stop. All right. We'll let you wrap it there and move to this. Critics are also lighting up the Biden administration over the baby formula emergency and how long it has taken for them to even recognize it, let alone try to respond to it. Here's Pentagon spokesperson John Kirby trying to explain how imports and the president invoking the Defense of Production Act will work. Right now, the, the principal job for the military will be to work with HHS, the Department of Agriculture, the FDA, uh, to help provide contract commercial air to move uh, formula from overseas, particularly Europe, uh, to the United States. But that still doesn't tell us how much longer shelves will remain empty. With doctors warning mothers again, please do not dilute the formula or try to make your own. But come on, what are the options at this point? The supply na nationwide averaging at least 40% out of stock. Senator, I, I spoke with Senator Josh Hawley of Missouri last week, and he said he was one of, he's in one of the first states where they hit that 50% threshold. Mm -hmm. And he said then we knew we were in trouble because there's not enough to help us now that, that's in the bloodstream. Yes, and 54% of the baby formulas are out of stock in Tennessee, out of stock. Oh, no. so you've moved and above that point. yes, and you know, uh, we have been saying for weeks to the White House, give some waivers to import from Canada, EU, UK, and they chose not to do that. Why? Open, what reason did, we did they don't give you? Know. We don't know. They they just did not do that. Then you you look at the factory in Michigan and Harris, they could have opened that. FDA could have opened that. They knew back in February that they should have been opening that because back in February, we were at a 25% outage rate nationwide. They could have taken care of this. That one wait, factory makes 40% of all the baby formula in this minute, country. Wait a minute, I gotta slow you down. In three months, less than three months, we went from 25% to over 50% in your state, yes. out of stock. And nothing happened between doubling where our losses were in February? And what does this administration do? They wait for a problem to become a crisis, they make the wrong decision, and then they have to come back and try to fix it, which is what they're doing now with the waivers and with the Defense Production Act. This never needed to happen. We have two children in Tennessee that have been hospitalized for lack of formula. Every time I talk with some of these parents, it is very emotional. I, I just, I, I cannot even, you're a mom. I'm a mom and a mm -hmm. grandmom. And, you know, it is just heart-wrenching. It's unfathomable. What these children are going through. And they're calling family members and friends in other states and yeah. saying, can you see if you can find some? I'll pay you to FedEx it to me. And, and what you've told me from this conversation is that the White House simply doesn't hear or didn't hear, and now they're trying to play catch-up. I tell you, that's a dangerous game mm -hmm. because young lives are at stake. And throughout that's the right. pandemic, we know they said they care. Don't they care now? I, I just don't get it. Senator, thank you for being I'm in delighted to and be being here. Thank Appreciate you. it.